Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Today we are going to be checking out a brand new route called the East Midlands Coal Route. Now this has just been released literally like a few sort of minutes or something before I, <laughs> I don't know what time it was released but I'm, 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 I'm doing this very close to the release. It's really not been that long since it was released. Uh, so, I thought I'd download it, or buy it, download it, have a look, and see what it's like. It's by Creative Rails, so we can probably tell what it's going to be like. But we should keep an open mind. You know, Creative Rails uh, East Coast Mainline wasn't too bad, so, you know. We'll, we'll, we'll give it a chance. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see what it's like. Uh, some bits did look a bit sparse of scenery. I'm kind of liking what I'm seeing so far. With the exception of this, of course. The, uh, the, the, the unable to load tracks dot bin. Uh, if you do ever, uh, hit that problem, press F2, press cancel, and it gets around it. Simple. Right, um, I'm gonna pause the scenario for a second. Because, in fact, let's go into 8 mode so we can fly around and have a look. Right, um, because, because of not a lot, really. Just, just because I can. Um, so, yeah, uh, uh, it, uh, it, uh, yes, y yeah, that, that is, uh, that, d yes, um, d d d d just, yes, that's, that's all I have to say to that. Okay, okay, Let, let's, let's not look at the hoppers for too long, shall we not? We, we might have to get some AP ones up in here, possibly. <sighs> okay, whatever. Um, are these... Hang on, hang on, wait, 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 one second, one second. A requirement of the route is that you have the European Assets Pack. So why did they make their own hoppers without even putting a bottom on them? That doesn't make any sense. They took something that was okay and they made remade it worse, if that makes sense. I mean, fair play to them from actually doing it, but... You could have put a little more effort in it, I think. If you're charging people for this. So yeah, the, the route is currently priced at 25 24 sorry, £24.99. So £25 for the route. What does it include? 25 miles of track. Yes, you are paying one pound per mile of track. Um I have the manual open so we can see exactly what's going on here. Uh, which I will have a look in a second, but on the face of it, that doesn't sound too good. However, I am not necessarily going to let that sort of uh, stop me having an open mind on the route because because whilst whilst the price doesn't seem that great, I mean uh, DTG sold their their um, well, it wasn't theirs by the by the sound of things. But the, uh, the Southampton to Bournemouth route was only 18 quid, and that was about 35 miles. So when you think of it like that, it doesn't sound that great. However, the, pos the, the point of this route is not to have long drives. The point of this route is to recreate MGR services. Now, if you don't know what an MGR service is, basically, you would get uh, potentially a pair of 20s, um, a 56, a 58, a 60, a 47, a 37, a pair of 37s. But basically, there were an awful lot of BR Blue Locos that were were used on these. And they were introduced to increase efficiency. See, when they had these kind of mineral wagons, you'd have to go to the to the coal mine, load up everything, and then travel to the... And, then, you know, uh, so it would take a while to load up everything because you'd have to stop and load everything up. And then you'd have to go back and... Go, go to the other end, unload everything in the power station. It needs to take ages to scoop it all out and stuff. So they introduced MGRs. And the point of the MGRs was so that they would not be, uh, that, so that the service wouldn't, the train wouldn't have to stop. So it's called MGR, or they're called MGRs, or they're known as MGR wagons, because it's a merry-go-round system. Basically, a merry-go-round never has to stop because it never reaches the end of its track sort of thing. So if you think of the fairground ride, a merry-go-round, it never reaches the end, apart from when it's, stopped by sort of the person who's doing it same thing with these these things were designed so that they never had to stop moving um which increased the process so basically it would reach the coal mine there'd be a massive coal hopper above it the track the loco would slowly drive along underneath the coal hopper 
would load up the wagons so that they were full up of coal. Then it would drive off. This would be without stopping. He wouldn't stop to drive. It would just literally go under the hopper and fill up with the coal as it went. It would then drive to the power station. And you might see them on here. Uh, these here. These are the sort of arms here. They were used. They, there was uh, at the power station. I think. It, it, or is it them bits? It might be them bits. Oh yeah, no, it's part of the arm. Yeah. When the when the uh, the com the wagons got to the power station, there'd be a little sort of arm on the part of the fence. When it came past, it would knock into that piece, into this piece on the corner. I don't know if you can see my cursor, so I'll try, try not to use it. Knock into that piece. The uh, the arm would lift up and over, flip over. That would open the coal hopper. The coal would then drop out. And once it got to the other end, there'd be another arm that would flip the lever back over. And uh, and then the, the doors would close on the hopper. Uh, just mute Discord. So that meant that you could literally uh, go up at a really slow speed, crawl through the power station, and unload each hopper individually without even stopping. So then the train could go back to the coal mine and not stop doing it. Go to the go to the uh, power station, not stop. So it was basically a continuous loop, and that's the whole point in the route. Uh, in a, in a very long-winded but sort of that's how it means that's that's what it is sort of way. So let's get going. Let's let's start finding out what we've got to do. Warsaw up signing eleven. We're taking these mineral wagons by the looks of things, so we need to change our route. That one is what we want to change. Uh, if we set it to go into that head shunt, and then we put some lights on, forward, and you may notice, but I have the, uh, oh, I have the Armstrong Powerhouse sound packet in, in, enabled on this, uh, on this loco. This is obviously isn't the DTG sounds. The DTG sounds are frankly horrific. Trust me, I have the, um, I have the London Transport version. Of the class 20. I didn't have this one before. I'll explain why I've got this now. Uh, I had the London Transport class 20, and honestly, the sounds are incredibly bad. So instead, uh, I, I sort of I prefer to use Just Trains 20. I mean, it, it works better. Let, let's face it. The Just Trains better. The Just Trains class 20 functions so much better than this DTG version. However, the DTG version does look nicer. Where am I going? That one. That one. Cool. You've, you've got to admit that it does look nicer. So yeah, the reason why I have these... Uh, did I leave the brake on in the other cab? You, oh, I kind of like that though. I didn't know that. Okay. Uh, if you leave the brake on in the wrong cab... The train can't go in there. I didn't know that. I kind of like that. They're not, they're not sort of independently controlled. I left the brake open so I could do it. But that's, that's actually pretty cool. I like that. This is like non multiple working. I don't know. 56, you're noisy. I wonder if they'll, uh, they'll update the 56 in. Is there a 56 in there? I can't remember. If there is though, they need to update it. It's very noisy. It doesn't sound too bad. Right, so yeah, so I have this class 20, uh, the DCU one, I never, and it wasn't really something I uh, was particularly bothered in buying. But, you see, for this route to work properly with the scenarios, you actually need this class 20 as part of the requirement, which you have to buy separately. They've been nice enough, however, to have uh, done a pack, a, uh, a bundle, sorry, which gives you the class 31, which you also need. And the class 20. I, mean, I think it's about 40 quid. However, because I had the 31, I think I only paid about 26 something for this. Roughly 27 quid I paid to get the 20 in the route. With the with the blue the blue skin. Because this skin is the one off the workshop. Right, there we go. Let's couple turn the lights off actually. Come on. Come on, you know you want to there you go. Plunk, right. Stick it into oh wait, no, you need to be in reverse, don't you? Apparently the over the uh, overspeed. Well, actually, this thing probably doesn't even have overspeed or run back or whatever you want to call it. Right, uh, release the brakes this end. Apply them that end. Oh, I did put it in reverse. Cool. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, it panics. It sh shoves the emergency brakes on, apparently, if um, if you don't do it right. If you don't leave the rear in, uh, in reverse. Right, we change that point now. Uh, I think we changed the point. Oh, that's the wrong point, is it? Hang on. We have to change this manually, because I think they're too close together to actually render the both levers. Or is that... Oh, that's manual control. That's why. Okay. Oh, sorry. Automatic control. It's signaler control. Right. Let's get a move on then, shall we? So yeah, I paid about 27 quid for this. Um, like I say, these do look nice, but then they're certainly not quite as nice to drive. They feel a bit light, to be honest. That they've got a lot of power. And maybe they shouldn't have quite as much. I'm assuming Warsaw Siding 9. Hang on, wait, where are we going? Couple to the Oh, okay. Oh, okay. We're not we're not done shunting. I thought we were done shunting. I didn't look at that. Well, that would teach me. I suppose we haven't got a brake van, have we? And these are unfitted wagons. Wow, okay. I, uh, I nearly, uh, I nearly messed up there. Okay. Okay, you know. You know. Um, I believe this scenario is literally just carry these wagons to the other end of the line. There's no merry-go-round operations in this, but there are apparently scenarios for it. Um... So yeah, they've, they've, they've been a bit cheeky with the with the scenario requirements. Uh, I'll go through the through the manual in a second and find out what's actually included. Let's stop at this signal first, however. That sounds nice. I must say, it does sound nice. How are we supposed to? Can we tap through the signal? Yeah, we can. Okay. Ask that guy if it's alright to pass a signal. Come on. Come on. But the mob working is obviously active between the two. It's just that the brakes can't, obviously, because it's a, it's a valve sort of thing. I wonder if AP will do, update the wagon sound pack, the four wheeler wagon sound pack for these as well. I hope so. I think these are Creative Rails wagons. I don't recognise them from the. I don't recognise them from the um, thingy pack. They look slightly different to the European Assets pack. Oh, that sounds familiar. Oh, hello. Hello, Mr. 33. I don't even know if... Yeah, you should have to that. Concept of this route. That's why I, I sort of. Let's have a look at the route map, shall we? The apparently there's like seven collieries. See that? There's a little. It's only a little route, but you've got a, quite a lot of branch lines that go off into the different collieries and stuff. So we'll. Where are we? We're up here. We're near the end of the route. Okay. Where's that? Shrebrook Colliery. Some kind of colliery up there as well. They've been working. I know Creative Rails. They've, they've they've had this sort of. They've had this on for quite a while. This thing. They're, they're, wait, wait. I swear I set the points correctly. Did I not set the points correctly? Or did I fluff up and set and deset the points correctly? If that makes sense. I must have put the points wrong then. They must have been right beforehand. I'm sure they were set. I'm sure I put them correct, though. Hmm. Where's the manual, anyway? Where, where's it gone? There it is. Right, uh... NCB Sherwood Colliery. These are the... These are what included. Uh, this is a brief... Brief history and rule... Yada, yada, yada. Right, okay. Yeah, NCB Sherwood Colliery. Ollerton Colliery, High Marnham, and I think we might be over the points enough now. Wait, hang on. Oh, the. Wow, okay, that's uh, us. It's great sound blending, DTG. That's obviously not the sound pack then. I mean, the, the flange squeal's just totally not, but you know. 
But I wasn't going to drive the 20s without that sound pack. No way. Like I said, it's awful, so. No, there's no 56 sound pack, is there? There's an enhancement pack, of course. I'm an idiot. I do like the weather either. They've actually... And like I said though, TCG have actually done a nice job on these Fast 20s, to be sure. Be certainly better than just trains. Certainly better than just trains. They're alright. They're acceptable, but... They're not great. The just trains ones, so... I kind of like the, the fact that the door is referenced on the inside of the wagon, though. I don't think it was before. I don't actually mind some of the sounds from these wagons. I like the little clicks and clunks and squeaks. Quite nice to listen to sometimes. This is taking well longer than it should do, well, obviously, but you know. They sound like they're breaking, like they're fitted. But they're not fitted. These are... There we go, right. Concentration reversal, five miles. Right. Anyway, uh, what are the other collieries we've got? Have we got a green now? We've still got a red. Uh, Sherwood Colliery, High Arnhem. Shirebrook Colliery, Warsop, Sidings. Tuxford Central. Shirebrook Depot, so that must be a depot then, rather than a colliery. Uh, War Stop Sidings, Mansfield Concentration Sidings, plus two quick drives. Brief history, small piece, or oh, I'll read that in a second. I'll read that once we get going. That, that'd be easier. The scenario is supposed to be 27 minutes. I'm sure we'll probably make a 40 minute video out of it somehow, but you know. We're gonna need a lot of braking pull, br br a lot of braking time, I reckon. Oh look, there we go. We have the signal now. Right, obviously we're operating mostly under semaphore signalling. See, that goes somewhere, but on the map it suggests it doesn't, so... Oh, look. There is a loading point here. Really? Is there a hill? Are we going down a slight hill? We must be. There must be some part of the train that is on a slight downhill. Is that the slow speed control? Yes, it is. Cool. We might need that one day on this route, potentially. Right, 30... <clears throat> Train's obviously clear of the yard now. Nice hall. Nice hall. Right, okay. Um, brief history. East Midlands Coal Route is a small piece of once, once vast Nottinghamshire coal field that's been faithfully recreated to capture the atmosphere that surrounded these hard working collieries that fed the region's ravenous coal fired power stations. The line's very existence was for the conveyance of East Midlands Coal. The Shirebrook to High Marnham section forms part of the Lancashire, Derbyshire and East Coast Railway and dates back to 1892. The Shirebrook to Sherwood Colliery section is part of the Midlands Railway to Nottingham to Worksop route. Check our speed. Put a bit more power on, I reckon. Yeah, risk of slipping. The route decline began 
All right, the, the route decline began to set in during the 1950s as well as overall UK coal production began to fall. The early 1990s saw the fastest decline in mass colliery closure begin to bite, with the last remaining pits in Nottinghamshire, Florbury Colliery, closing in 2015. So it's not that long ago that the, one of these actually closed. That's impressive. Yeah, and also it's quite a slow route as well, so it will take it will take you a while to travel the distance. This is going to be fun, isn't it? We're going to be trying to read this while the train is going to be trying to accelerate. Okay. Uh, the route today is largely being taken over by Network Rail, who has invested in the line improvements and using it for testing purposes. The former Midland Railway section now forms part of the Robin Hood line that's seen a return to passenger traffic. I've seen the Robin Hood line, so I've been under it, part of it. Um, but testing, is it? Is that, I thought that was all part of the old works test track. Though. But a diesel, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know. I might be, I might be mixing two places up. I'm guessing. Uh, the disused station. It looks like a disused station. I think it is. Yep, indeed it is. Cool. But who knows where it is? Uh, is there, there's not even a marker. I thought it might have said disused, such and such disused platform or something. But alas, it doesn't. Yeah, uh, this is what they meant by the sparse population of the sparse population. I actually, I'm not, I'm not thinking it looks too bad. It looks very Kuju. It does look very Kuju. But the scenery density doesn't look all that bad. I can live with it, let's say. It's not exactly blowing me away. But it's not particularly underwhelming me either. I'm sort of, I'm sort of satisfied, I guess, with this scene. It looks alright. It's acceptable. 25 quid acceptable. Maybe. I don't know. I, I, it depends sort of on the content. I'm a bit stuck on the price, if I'm honest. But like, at the, at the moment, I'm a bit neutral on it. Let's see what the let's see what the the content will bring in. Root requirements, uh, yeah. So it requires the European assets pack, which is included in the bundle if you buy the bundle. The 31 freight pack, which is also included in the bundle. The class 20 and the blue and the uh, marketplace blue livery, which are indeed included in the bundle, and that is what we are driving here. We're driving the 20 with the blue reskin. Signaling, uh, signals. These have been designed to work a little differently from the default server force signals included with the original J Kuju rail simulator. In an effort to replicate how server force were used to control speed of trains, certain situations to see a player approach a signal at danger. The route is set for the player to proceed, the signal should clear as you approach. But that the train speed should reflect that. Uh, but the train speed should reflect that a complete stop is necessary. Signals don't clear in the opposite direction of travel. Did they? Oh yeah, I suppose they did, didn't they? The Kuju ones, yeah. <coughs> so yeah, nice, nice, fair enough. <coughs> Number fifty-six. Very loud! I got a wagon sound a bit. Take a listen to ours as well, I mean. Cool, it sounds. I like the pile. Look at the pylons. That's new. They look a bit chunky, but other than that. Yeah, they, uh, the sounds definitely need to improve on that. Should buy a tractor on that. Good, you know, good thing 
bad things. Waiting for signal two. When a signal has been standing, i.e. waiting for an AI train to clear the, in the intended path, the player must make a move forward towards the signal for it to clear. Short of the player path with check the 2D map. Okay. Player must move forward, okay. Uh, so there's a bit of a bug in the signaling then. It looks like they may have used the Kuju scripting it on some parts at least. Known issue. For use for uses for uses for uses that create your own scenario. Uh, I found a known issue here. It says for uses rather than for users. You know. Uh, well, it was obviously an unknown issue, I guess. So, good, 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 good manual writing there. You can English. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. But it, they could have stuck it into Word or something and, and checked the spelling on it, run a spell checker on it. They obviously got great proofreaders as well. Oh, I like that sign being on its side though. That, that's quite cool. It's nice that they thought about that. Uh. No issue. Please note that when attaching a loco to CRLP HIA wagons, you must first place the loco onto the track, then allow it to appear fully, then move to attach the wagons. A crash in the sim can occur if you attach a loco to the wagons immediately before it is fully rendered. <laughs> so it's an issue with the wagons then. They messed up. They, they, they built their own wagons so they don't even work properly. You've got to quite like that, haven't you? Uh, I mean, maybe I'm being too harsh on them, but come on, if you're charging 25 quid for this, you've got to have a certain amount of quality control, surely. There's got to be ways around this. You can't just sort of give up at the first hurdle. You know, did you see what I mean? Like I say, maybe I'm being too harsh, but if they're charging for this, if it was a freeware route, then fair enough. I would understand. If somebody doesn't feel like doing the sort of if somebody doesn't have the time or wanna put the work in for a free route, that's fine. Because it's free, you know. We don't expect you to do it in the first place, so the fact you are doing it is nice. But for something that's gonna be sold for twenty-five quid, I just feel it's a bit it's a little bit lazy. Anyway, uh, route set up, time period set been set up in around the 1980s. This was chosen as it saw a large number of locos stabled at Sherbrooke Depot, um, uh, uh, Shirebrook Depot, and a significant number of collieries were still producing coal. Rolling stock. The following items of rolling stock are included with the route. Class 56. The Sentinel, which I've heard is a bit basic. I've heard the Sentinel, a uh, little guard shunter pretty much, industrial guard shunter. They've included one of them, the little two-wheeler version. But apparently it's very basic. <clears throat> so we, that'll be one to try out at some point. I will, I will come back and try that out. 32 ton HIA. Uh, uh, just quickly reading through this. I don't really see any sort of... There's no reference to the fact that they have no bottom whatsoever, to say the least. <laughs> I don't know if that was a glitch or or what, but surely you can make it load and unload without a bottom. It doesn't actually need to pull through the bottom of it to, to, to actually work in the game, I'm afraid. Uh, and then you've got a load of... NCB Shield Colliery, you've got a few scenarios which are included. And operation notices, signals at danger. In a situation where a signal is at danger and doesn't clear, despite the player having press, having the path and pressing the tab key, this should grant you permission to pass at danger. Oh no, press, it just says press the tab key, oh okay. I thought it was like, if the tab key don't work, then you need to do such and such. Unmarked feature for the driver should be 
should regard all sidings having a speed restriction of 10 miles an hour unless clearly marked otherwise. When entering depots and workshop, you should proceed at 5. Okay, that's fair enough. Some si plenty of sidings aren't, um, aren't actually marked up. There's a 31. Nice. It's nice to see these little, see the stock, like such a variety of stock, and I really can't wait to see scenario creators actually uh, produce for this route. When we start getting some Armstrong Powerhouse enhanced and uh, and sound packed stuff up in here, we start seeing some sort of properly timetable scenarios with realistic runs and all that. I'm not saying these aren't properly timetable with realistic runs, but you know. More AI. Oh wow, it actually um put more power on on the on the, on the flat a bit. Okay, that's interesting. Pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. Uh coal loading. Crews must be careful. M oh my must ensure care. <coughs> oh, apology. Crews must ensure careful positioning and wagons and bolt loaders and colliery screens. To ensure successful load, ensure a successful load of HA wagons. Four wagons should be positioned certain, centrally under the four coal chutes. So fill press T repeatedly until all four wagons have been filled. This operation should be carried out until all the wagons are trained and completely, completely loaded. Okay, so you can't actually move along in this. It's, it's, it's following, unfortunately, it's following the uh, the original game physics. You can't actually move while well, I mean. Can. Oh, was we supposed to, uh, were we supposed to, uh, enter that siding there? Is that where, uh, where our stopping point was? Oh well, oh well, it don't matter. I'm not, I'm not particularly playing it to sort of get the high score or anything. I'm not worried about that. I'm just wanting to have a look at the route. I'm actually, I'm actually not exactly overwhelmed, but I'm not underwhelmed at the scenery either, sort of thing. I think it's acceptable. It'd be nice to see it without all this fog. The fog is being a, is a slight nuisance towards the force. Did I need the brake on? Stick that in reverse. Stick that in forward. And off we go. Uh, coal unloading, yeah, you can do free wagons to unload, it's the same thing. Yeah, I was just reading the credits. Uh, there's not a lot in there. There's there's a there's a um, Paul Paul Godber for the uh, rolling stock. Made the rolling stock. Mark Britton uh, did the signal script, and then DTG allowed the uh, pack to be to be produced. Obviously. Hey, I didn't even see that marker. Actually, that looks like they're supposed to have. Break parts. Is that a brake hang on, is that a brake cylinder there? That could be a brake cylinder actually, one sec. Let's just I want to have a quick a closer look at these. Is it? It looks like it possibly links to the brake to the brake rigging. I think these might actually be be fitted, these wagons, you know. I do wonder why we didn't have a guards van. I think they are actually fitted. They don't look it though. Like mineral wagons generally weren't, I don't think. But maybe these ones were modified in later life. To uh to be fitted, possibly. We're gonna need a bit of power up until, aren't we? Oh apparently not. Apparently we we're actually gaining speed. I mean they are they do seem to be Applying a braking force, so you know, I don't know. Concentration sidings. You can kind of, you can kind of, sort of imagine being a signaler here. It sort, sort of works. Sort of works. <clears throat> I don't 
don't think we've got any signals. Have we? That's a signal there. Um, I've got to double check. Oh no, that's that one. Okay. It looked like a different signal. Fair enough. Yeah, I'm definitely going to try on a Sentinel at some point. And I'm going to try out the, uh, the, the sort of an MGR run as well, I reckon. I, I reckon they'd be, they'd be uh, useful ones to have a look at. See, see what you, see what sort of this route actually has in store. I'm... I don't really know what to say about this, to be honest. I am torn. And that is genuine. Creative Rails, like you say, they're not exactly known for their particularly high detail and quality roofs. However, looking at this, I'm actually not too gutted about the scenery. I think the scenery is acceptable, like I've said before, personally. I, I think as, as far as um, as far as functionality of the route itself is concerned, this route's probably got a lot in store, and we'll probably find some functions that we didn't even think about in the first place. If you're if you're into your freight trains, then this is a definite have. This is a must-have. This route, because you're going to be able to load and unload, especially your sort of BR coal trains. I mean, we can re-period this route pretty easily, I reckon, to get group BR green and sort of an earlier, maybe 70s scenarios and... I reckon this route has potential. I really do. So would I say buy it? Maybe. It depends on how much you're going to use it. If you want a... Oh, crikey. That wagon didn't mean to sit right now. Uh, if you want a route that's sort of going to be... If you want a high-speed route, and like lots of passenger runs and stuff. This certainly isn't your route. If you want a nice sort of busy freight route with lots of scenario potential, then yeah, definitely. Definitely this is your route. So yeah. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say it's worth 25 quid. That is one thing I think we can probably agree on. Bad luck, scenario not complete. That's because I right overrun that stop marker, isn't it? I completely forgot that we had to stop there. I was reading the manual, alright? Don't judge me. So yeah, I think I'm going to let you guys judge this on your own, to be honest, on the most part. I would say get it, but I wouldn't necessarily say get it at full price. So it's it's purely up to you guys on this one, I reckon. Make your own minds up, uh, and yeah, potentially wait for a sale, is what I can advise. Anyway guys, I've actually quite enjoyed that, um, that, that was quite a nice run. With East Midlands Coal, yeah, you're alright. Creative Rails, you, you did okay on that one. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching everybody, and we will see you all next time. Goodbye!